Hi, Stephen. Uh, Paul here. So I've just been chatting with you on Facebook and I think I have a relatively simple solution for you here. You can see I've come up with this particular slide here and I just have an image of a girl holding an easel and I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven smart shapes, which it's my intention to first of all, convert those into buttons. You could use images as buttons. You could use actual buttons. I like the versatility of uh, shapes as buttons. So I'm going to just turn these into buttons here. And I'm going to record this live. I'm not going to edit it or anything like that. So you will literally uh, see how long this takes me to build in real time here. Um, I usually like to uh, make sure that depending on what I'm doing, of course, I may choose to have uh, different rollover and down states. It's just inherited the original color. So I'm not going to worry too much about that. And I'm also going to create another shape, which I'm going to very carefully place over top of this easel here. And we're simply going to make that uh, you could do one of two things. You could make it entirely transparent, which is probably the easiest way to go. And um, I'm just going to keep this simple here. I'm not going to actually write out the seven habits of highly effective people. Um, I'll, I'll just put the titles for those. So for one is to be proactive. And let's just change that to a nicer font because that's just the way I like to do things there and um, maybe it italicize it as well here. Um, now that I have my initial state, I'm going to go into state view, but I just realized I should probably give this a title. I'm going to call it easel. Is that right? How about whiteboard? There we go. <laughs> And I'm going to make sure my buttons are labeled as well. So I'm going to say um, habit one, habit two. And I'm doing this live because, you know, you said it's not efficient. And what I'm hoping to demonstrate is that um, it is fairly efficient, but what's cool about this as well is that when you're finished, you can save this. And if you come up with a similar problem in the future, you can reuse this slide in other projects simply by copying it and pasting it into uh, a new project. Now, if you need to keep track of which buttons have been pressed or not, you can uh, store that information in a variable. Um, if you only want them to allow, if you only want them to press one button, remember the last button that they pressed, even though they can press as many buttons as they wish. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of different variations that you can do here. But I'm going to keep this as simple as possible. All we're going to do is have these buttons change the appearance of this and um, maybe what we'll do is we'll store the value that is being stored in here so uh, and so that you can use that for other purposes perhaps later in the course um, again this is just based on my interpretation so uh, let's start off by well let's do this I'll, I'll do this the correct way that i would do this here uh, I want to keep track of what buttons have been pressed, which is how I typically do it. So I would go into variables and I would create a variable called habit one. And I'm just going to copy the root of that. Habit two, habit three, habit four, Habit five, habit six, 
and have it seven. Okay. First thing I need to do is write my first advanced action. In theory, I could write seven advanced actions, all based on this first one I'm going to write. So I'm going to go to Project, Advanced Actions. And I'll call this Habit 1. And what do we need to do? Um, well, actually, before I do this, let's add my multiple states here because I can't actually change the states if there's no states to change. So let's go into state view and we'll add the additional states. So the next state will be, and I'm just going to, I've got a little cheat sheet here on my other screen and I'm just going to call this what it is and we'll change the text. The last one's my favorite because it has to deal with professional development. All right, so I have my multi-state object. Now there's a couple of ways you can do this. Actually, I think to keep things easy, um, yeah, let's go back into state view. I'm going to make a version of this. I'm going to duplicate this state here and call this be proactive. You know, as you'll discover, I'm going to put this near the top because it's actually. And then for this version here, I'm just going to edit that text and then change this one to be. Okay, so it starts off with nothing displayed on the easel and you can, of course, uh, start to write that advanced action. So let's go into advanced actions and when someone presses button one, you know what, and I'll just call these button one just to keep it simple. We're going to do two things. We're going to update the, the value of that variable. So we're going to assign habit one with the literal value of one. Perfect. And we're going to change the state of our whiteboard to be proactive, which is the first of the seven habits there. And you might be thinking, well, okay, you've done this advanced action. I like to write advanced actions and I'm going to save this as an action. Click OK. And I like to write advanced actions because as I'm developing my course, what's going to come along at some point is the decision to maybe add some stuff to advanced actions. So I might decide maybe I don't just want to change the text on the whiteboard. Maybe I want to change her facial reaction to coincide. So I'll make her into a multi-state object. And rather than rewrite the whole advanced action or shared action from scratch, the advantage is, is that I can uh, just modify what I've done and save those changes. And a lot of times when I'm writing advanced actions, that's how I'll do it. But I'm going to keep it simple in this case. Now, I always like to save one example of what would be, in this case, seven advanced actions. 
And if I was going to create the same thing for button two, very simple. I click this duplicate action button here, give it a new name, one that corresponds to the next button that I need to do. And we're going to assign habit two with a value of one. Again, we're keeping track. You might need to use this information later in the course, but we're going to change our whiteboard image to the second of those two items, begin with the end in mind. And we would update that. And you can see you can quite quickly build those seven advanced actions just by duplicating the actions and making a couple of small modifications. But here's another way you can do it with shared actions. So I'm going to click on save as a shared action and this interface comes up. Now I don't want to call it button two because this is going to be used on one through seven buttons. So I'm just going to call this click to reveal. Um, in this case here, we just need a description of what these parameters are so that it's easy for you to assign the appropriate objects and the appropriate variables. So in this case here, um, we just want to, we don't need to, yeah, we need to know which variable. So this is going to be variable to change and we're going to say this is the whiteboard and this is the state of the whiteboard. So what are we changing the whiteboard to? Um, I don't need to remember what the value of one is because that's just going to be the same value each and every time. I could select it and include it as the um, a variable to adjust in the shared action, but it's unnecessary. So in this case, I'm going to hit save. Okay, and I can close this now. And then here's what I can do. I can select button one, go to actions. And instead of choosing execute advanced actions and selecting button one, what I would do is execute shared action, choose my click to reveal and hit the parameters icon and simply select habit one, the whiteboard, which is always going to be the same and proactive save number two execute shared action. So habit two, whiteboard, and begin with the end in mind. Let's try three, execute shared actions. Habit three, whiteboard, first things first. So you've already really got the structure in place. You're just selecting the objects and variables that that structure uses here. So I'm on number four here. One, two, three. Make sure I'm choosing the right items there. And five, execute shared actions. Again, we'll choose five, whiteboard, Seek to first understand. And we're on six whiteboard. And then last but not least, seven whiteboard and the last of the multi states within that object save there. Let's test this out and see that it works. Hopefully it does.
and if necessary, each of the variables I've created now has a value of one, and I can use that for a number of different reasons. Like if I need to display which of the seven habits that you clicked on, I can show that to a learner later on. But the important thing is that they can sit here all day long um, and press those buttons. And one thing I like to do, as you've probably seen before, is do this. Now, you mentioned other things appearing. Here's an example of that. So if we go into our multi-state object, let's go into state view here. If you're not using responsive design, if you're using a non-responsive design like I am, you can do a couple of interesting things here. So when I'm talking about step one, be proactive, what I can do is I can just go and select a star and we can add that to our slide there. Let's choose maybe an interesting color for that. So that stands out there. I can copy that. Let's go to the number two one. I'm gonna paste it in. But this time I'm just gonna move it up to here. So you can actually do some really cool stuff to this multi-state object to make it look like you're actually changing um, the buttons themselves. But all I'm doing is just adding another object. And when you're in a multi-state mode like this, whatever is available up here on your toolbar, uh, text, shape, object, these are things that you can add, uh, at least in the case of non-responsive design um, courses here. So. This just further enhances that. I'm not sure what you are gonna add to these multi-states, but let's take a look at what this looks like now. Um, I think I was gonna do this too. Yeah, I did it already. I was gonna show the hand cursor and disable the click sound. So let's preview this and see what this looks like. Okay. That's cool. So you can do some really cool stuff like that. Hopefully this is close to what you had in mind. Um, if not, I'm sorry. I, I didn't want to waste your time, but um, I've done similar tutorials like this, not exactly like this. Uh, and of course your layout might be different. You might look, you know, I chose circle buttons just because I'm in a circle button kind of mood lately, <laughs> but it can be whatever you want. Uh, you know, in this case, I thought an easel by itself was kind of boring, so I put the girl here to make it look interesting. But hopefully this helps you out, Stephen. Let me know either way. Um, if nothing else, you've got a private tutorial. So that was kind of cool. And I'll just share this with you. I'm going to post it to, um, to YouTube, but it'll be unlisted. And uh, maybe what I'll do is I'll share it with all the members of my YouTube channel, and then I'll share it with you on Facebook as well. All right, talk to you soon. Bye.